Germany's distressed Deutsche Bank faces penalties, legal action, and the possible prosecution of senior management because of its responsibility in a $20 billion Russian money laundering scheme, according to a confidential internal report. Deutsche Bank was used to launder the money via its corresponding banking network, concretely permitting illegal Russian payments to be routed to the US, the European Union, and Asia. Shell companies, typically based in the UK, loaned money to each other. Companies then defaulted on this massive artificial debt. Corrupt judges in Moldova validated the debt, with billions transferred to Moldova and the Baltics via a bank in Latvia. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. The British daily newspaper The Guardian published a confidential internal report in which the bank admits fears over major disciplinary action from the US and the UK regulators, acknowledging that the scandal had hurt its global brand and was presumably to cause client erosion and a drop in market value. Deutsche Bank is said to have been implicated in a massive money laundering scheme, called the Global Laundromat, The Guardian reported. The scheme, used by Russian criminals with ties to the Kremlin and the old KGB and FSB, involved moving money into the Western financial system between 2010 and 2014. According to The Guardian report, the cash involved could total $80 billion. This is how Deutsche Bank was laundering billions of Russian money called Global Laundromat 20 billion, in the Global Laundromat, between 2010 and 2014, at least 20 billion dollars of Russian money was laundered, Deutsche Bank again played an important role. In this scheme, the Latvian bank Trasta Komerkbanka was used as the last point before the money was transferred across the globe. Trasta needed a corresponding Western financial institute to process its dollar-denominated transactions. Two German banks became corresponding banks for Trasta, Deutsche and Commerzbank. There are, of course, connections from the global laundromat to Vladimir Putin. The Russian RZB Bank was a significant player in this multi-billion ruble fraud. This Moscow bank wired 152.5 billion rubles, about $5 billion, to the Moldovan Moldinkan Bank from 2012 to 2014. Moldinkenbank received most of the wires from Russian banks and then routed the money through the Latvian Trasta Komerkbanka, which transferred it to Europe. Until 2011, RZB belonged to Elena Baturina, wife of the former mayor of Moscow, Yuri Luzhkov. In 2010, Luzhkov was ousted by President Putin, and the next year Baturina also lost RZB. In 2011, six Cyprus companies became the owners of RZB. One of them, Bowdoin Limited, which controlled 16.35% of RZB, was owned by St. Petersburg businessman Alexander Grigoriev, who became the corporate director of RZB. Grigoriev brought a new management team to RZB, which included Igor Putin, Vladimir Putin's cousin, who served on RZB's board until 2014. Grigoriev and Igor Putin share several connections. Igor Putin also was a board member of construction company Su 888, where Grigoriev is a majority shareholder. Igor Putin was also a board member of Promsberbank, in which Grigoriev owned a share. In 2013, Grigoriev acquired another Moldovan bank, Zapadny. Zapadny opened correspondent accounts in Molden Khan Bank and also became involved in transferring money from Russia to Moldova. Ilya Lamakin Rumyantsev, who became CEO of Zapadny, had been head of Putin's presidential expert department in 2009 2011. In 2014 15, regulators stripped Alexander Grigoriev from his banking licenses. It's hypocritical to blame the whole laundromat on Russian and German banks, going as far as labeling it the Russian laundromat when British banks were arguably taking most of the action, with HSBC Bank as the major player. Other banks involved in the laundromat, HSBC, Bank of America, JP Morgan, Standard Chartered, Lloyds, UBS, and Ing. We're talking about derivatives contracts in the value range of quadrillions of dollars, not millions, not billions, not trillions of quadrillions. And derivatives contracts are at the very core outright gambling. And so these quadrillions unspeakable almost unfathomable amounts of money being wagered really on the outcome of certain events. Certain farming contracts. Certain production contracting. It could be just about anything. The problem is these contracts get so convoluted they got so many different players betting on so many different things. And then there are bets on the bats that if the bank which handles these things were to go under, it would in one fell swoop wreck quadrillions worth the dollars in derivatives contracts. 
There's no way of even knowing if the world economy could also continue doing business if all those contracts were suddenly unworkable. Or suddenly invalid. It's staggering how fast the world's economy would come to a halt. Deutsche Bank has been a constant headache for the United States financial system. Because it is heavily intertwined via derivatives with the big banks on Wall Street, including JP Morgan Chase, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley and Bank of America, it has become the dark cloud on the horizon in the same way Citigroup cast a negative pall in the early days of the financial crisis of 2008. Prophecy is circulating that Deutsche Bank has allegedly filed bankruptcy or Deutsche Bank collapse has begun saying. It has not been confirmed yet, but Europe's biggest investment bank, Deutsche Bank, is in big trouble. If it becomes real, it will be the end of the financial system as we know it. Deutsche Bank could not fail without causing a domino effect and taking with it the whole system with $250 trillion debt. The banking sector is having a rough time. According to the McKinsey report, one in three banks threaten to disappear in the coming months. If so, does Deutsche Bank collapse begin? Conscious of the stakes, the banks have already begun their process of rationalization. And the potion is bitter. In 10 years, 2008 to 2018, already 600,000 banking jobs have been lost only in Eurozone. The first German bank, Deutsche Bank, has announced this summer that it will cut 18,000 jobs worldwide by 2022 as part of a 7.4 billion euros restructuring plan. German financial services giant Deutsche Bank AG is one of the largest and most important economic institutions in the world. Mainly due to self-imposed scandals, the bank is now having to take drastic measures to stay afloat. Investors everywhere should note that if such a critical piece of the too-big-to-fail banking system falters, it could trigger another global economic collapse and stock market crash. So are you prepared at all to deal with this? The Deutsche Bank is just a template. It also happened at Citibank. Though these banks didn't say that they got hacked or anything like that. Inside rumor, again rumor is that they were front running the Deutsche Bank bankruptcy. You know the banks they're very highly leveraged, and they are interdependent. If one major bank fails, a lot of others are going to fall like dominoes. A lot of financial experts predict that there's gonna be some sort of massive economic collapse. I also was told today that the Federal Reserve called an emergency meeting in Washington DC today. And while I was not privy to the topic of the meeting, I found out from a source that it allegedly discussed Deutsche Bank. Now I don't know if this is truly a little too coincidental that a lot of these things are all pointing towards Deutsche Bank. And I don't think the Germans would be too thrilled to have to announce that Germany's biggest bank may have gone bankrupt. There's a lot at stake here, and I don't know what kind of wreckage a banking collapse would really have. It could be complete chaos. You better be prepared. Because if things go to hell in a hand basket, the money you have, the cash money, it is not going to go toward paying your bills. The cash is gonna go to survival food. The trouble with the big bank collapse is that they will try to cover it up with a war. The best thing you can do is to get your money out of the bank and at least have it in a credit union. Deutsche Bank keeps getting secretly bailed out by deep pockets and government programs to prop up their fake stock value. Just like they do here in the US. Time to put two and two together, the US repo fraud and the fake story about JP Morgan Chase remixing its portfolio is all smoke and mirror. They are stuffing cash into the leaky spots in the rotten carcass of Deutsche Bank. The Federal Reserve, which is not an American institution any more than the UN. Instead, it's a clutch of criminals playing a high-stakes shell game with the already lost wealth of the citizens of our hollowed-out shadow puppet tragedy acted out every night on TV. Deutsche Bank keeps papering over the cracks with derivative contracts with Wall Street. Deutsche Bank essentially has an overdraft with the Fed. The Germans have mortgaged their citizens' pensions to loan money to Greece to buy German diesel submarines and Mercedes cars. This money never really left Germany, just made a loop, and wound up being a subsidy for German manufacturers. Ask yourself why Greece needs 40 F-16s and a half dozen modern submarines? The strong southern flank of NATO. The Russians are pissing themselves laughing. This was an end run around the public forum to prop up defense contractors. Basically, Greece has tourism, make me laugh, and olive trees and a merchant fleet. It is crucial that several years ago, the Dutch and German state banks collected their gold reserves and returned them. 
Also, around the time 2001, that the Fed started printing, this was when the huge construction boom began in Spain. Big airports in the middle of nowhere, etc. This real orgy would have been a windfall for German steelmakers, Rebar. Much of this was financed through Italian banks borrowing from German banks borrowing from the Fed. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.